Right, this is going to be a um, preview of Scott's London Tilbury and South End route. Um, I don't know if you know anything about the history of this, but Scott started making this route originally on Microsoft Train Simulator many years ago. And he's had many uh, changes with different simulators and aborted attempts through problems and crashes and all sorts of stuff. Um, he's been working really, really hard on this on his own, um, occasionally with some help from others for years and years. <clears throat> and it's at the point now um, where he's happy to show it off with more than a few screenshots. Saying that, you have to take into account that it's still a lot of work to be done. Um, the, a lot of the signaling doesn't work. Um, there's issues with um, some speeds in places. There's issues with platforms, the usual teething stuff you get with such a big route. Um, so it's not ready for release yet. If you are interested in the route, um, he does have a Facebook page set up where he posts um, information and updates on the route. I'll be sharing links to that um, throughout the stream, which I'll set one off now. There you go. Um, but yeah, as I say, bear in mind, this is this is still a work in progress for him. It's been a lot of work. Um, there will be obvious uh, issues that you'll see. Um, but I've had a play with this over the past few days, and he has done a very good job at nailing the feeling of the route. Um, he's using almost exclusively Dovetail Games assets with a few custom assets he's had made over the years. Obviously, you're not going to see um, accurate recreations of station buildings like that, but you will see some parts along the route that have been custom made that actually exist where they are. Um, the, it's set in 1990, um, so I'm not actually familiar with the, the layout of the route signaling and speeds wise until it was modernized in 93 because I started on the railway in 96. Um, so I can't comment on the accuracy of all that, um, but scenically, um, he's done very well. I know where I am generally just by looking at the screen. So saying that, hopefully, if I've done this right, uh, we'll be able to see a bit. Obviously, this is Fenchurch Street. Everyone knows Fenchurch Street. Um, some buildings missing up there still. Um, <laughs> right, this 302 that's coming in the platform now, I've made a bit of a mistake in a consist editor, so they don't really look like this. Uh, the 302 and the 308 he's working on, um, but they're, they're, they're old. I mean, they're, they're from the original rail simulator he had these models made from, so they're not really going to be drivable, and I'm not sure how he's going to distribute these if he does at all. And as Katie says, I'm absolutely terrible at driving Kells. This driver's propelling it in. It's just come out of East Ham with some servicing or something like that, I think. I don't know how that got mucked up, but I forgot to change it before I went out this morning. Sorry, I muted that. If you can't hear me over the engines, let me know and I'll turn the volume down. Obviously, I muted that on the title page because I didn't want to hear the steam engine going in the background. Right, I don't know if anyone actually knows this route um, in the real. But that view there is very accurate. This is very much like tower gateway was before it was remodelled when they used to have the two platforms I've set up three short runs you've got this one which is going to be um, non-stop to Tilbury Riverside 
Um, after that, we have um, a quick run from Shubriness to Fenchurch Street along the main line, and then I've got a quick trip across the Ockenham branch set out for people. Um, the signals are just put in because when he originally made it, I do believe um, things like the signalling are going to be changed. Scott's the one to ask about that. Um, so if you are interested, join the Facebook group that I post links to and ask questions. And generally very good at answering. Yeah, um, I'm a moderator on the group, and um, obviously Scott will let you in. About, I'm not sure which of these signals actually work, so I'm going to have to tab past quite a few of them. Obviously there you've got the Docklands running along the right-hand side. And again, as I say, you can look at this as a driver on the route, and I'll know exactly where I am generally. And I must remember, this engine is equipped with AWS, so we might have a few emergency brake applications. Yeah, Benny's put an awful lot of work in the scenery on this route. I don't know how he managed it because I originally started trying to build this route in train simulator days the same as him and I aborted that because I don't know if anyone tried routes in that thing. It's probably on the stream, let me check. This does have a little bit of slowdown when it loads stuff, it needs um, um, optimising but it's not usually a lot of lag. Breaking should Yeah, I could drop the resolution. I wanted to do it as highest resolution I could, but if it carries on, I'll have to pause it, drop the resolution and come back on a lower resolution. Obviously Limehouse. This is what his 302 is supposed to look like. I'm good, thank you, Jenks. It's been a busy old day. Wow, looking at my preview, that is really juddery. Right, what I'll do then, quickly, don't go anywhere, I will go straight back. Got the resolution on the stream, if this is any better. I think it's crossed it, really. Hopefully this is better. If it's still really juddery, let me know. But I looked at the preview and yeah, that was atrocious. I've not had a lot of time for streaming, Jenks. It's been a case of, I've been doing an awful lot of work lately. And when I finish doing a 13 day stint driving trains, I don't really want to come home and drive some more, I'm afraid. Right, so this is the up passenger loop here. Well, 
what we're coming up to now is Gas Factory Junction. Um, take a left here, it takes you to um, Bow Junction and then Stratford. Which he has got in the game, um, but that's nowhere near modelled. You could drive the full route, the original route, um, which is left along here through Stratford and then through Forest Gate. So as this is set in 1990, you'll find a few things that you're expecting to see that won't be there. Um, yeah, we will. I'll um, when I get a chance, I'll uh, pause and I'll show you the map. But I know I'm not going to end up being caught by an AWS or something. See, look, he's got all the district line tracking. And the district line's got station markers, and it's going to be signalled, so that's going to be drivable. Probably by a bow. Because um, I've been practicing, Katie. I chose this loco because it's actually the type of locomotive that used to run on this route. Obviously, this is West Ham, but at this point, the main line no longer had a station at West Ham. So it's modelled there it was, just with the grass and the weeds. Yeah, please don't mark me on my steam driving skills. Fast out. There's not a lot of AI traffic in this. Just you. I can coast now anyway. Yeah, there's not a lot of AI traffic because, to be honest, I didn't have time to add it all. I've made these little things up just to show it off. I don't know, Jenks. I don't drive kettles. I leave that up to the computer. Kettles are weird. So this is East Ham. He 
East Ham Underground Station and the old main line station. Some of this juddering is my machine having a heart attack, just so you know. East Ham Depot. Yeah, no, my PC I mean, had a fit in disgust, but there you go. Next bit's a 315, um, which is interesting because the 315 is a bit of a pain. Oh, nearly missed the AWS. Did I miss it? Ah, oh, I missed the AWS, damn it. I knew that was going to happen. Oh look, first attempt at my foul button. Made that for Ben. Well, I'm not going to let him uh, trigger it. I can send you the assets. All it is is a um, PNG and a WAV file. Right. We had that little unscheduled stop. Yeah, the assets aren't, well, I say, the fail stamp came from a Google search and the sound comes from a game software development thing. I trigger them using Stream Deck, but I'm sure you could do it other ways. Yeah. <laughs> Fireman was running behind the train. Platform 7 at Barking. Oh yeah, I forgot about it. There's a Class 37 passing I put in for you. Not about that. We would have passed that in the station if I hadn't have got it all wrong. Yep, thanks for that. I'll plug the group again. I'm one of the moderators on the group, so when this is done, I'll allow people to come in. These are the old good lines. Marking. This one has been lifted at this point um, and it's put down further around the corner. Also, I remember I haven't turned off quit on SPAD, so that'll be interesting if I don't tab past one.
We have a quick look at the route. That's a quick overview of the route so far. This part is the LTS. See, that's the South End Victoria line. Get it, get it, get it! Oh, I got it. I wish I hadn't picked a train equipped with AWS for this. This is the drive line I drive in real life, yes, Katie. It's set six years before I joined, but it's the line. This is what was um, Ripple Lane Depot, which was a very big freight depot until it closed in the early 90s. Dagenham cold storage. Uh -huh. All this is being replaced now with the new line to Barking side, the London Overground line. All these sidings are gone. Um, Part on the far side there is a freight liner terminal. You can just see the crane for it there. Try a quick. This is still here, but the rest of it's been lifted. This is huge, Jelly. He's worked years on this. Um, this freight liner siding is now the Eddie Stobart London Distribution Centre warehouse there and lots of lorries park up. Still got two sidings but they don't use them. Going into Dagenham Dock um, and this is accurate track layout until they remodelled it for the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. Yeah, I do think at times I thought Scott has like bitten off a bit more than he can handle, but he's done a really good job on it. If you were to look at old pictures set in this time period of this route, you'll recognise all these places. Oh, green signal. Good. <laughs> yeah, set in 1990 because it's when he started, quite possibly. Um, there are gradients, Rob, but this is a very flat route, naturally. Um, when they built this part of the route, this is the original part of the route that's built in 1854. They chose this route because it's all marshland um, and it's very cheap to build. And when the railway opened, uh, they had the cheapest fares because it was so cheap for them to construct. When you go, um, when we do the next part, you'll see more gradients. But this part of the route is very, very flat in real life. This is all like marshland on the bank of the Thames. The River Thames is just over there for the whole route.
He's used the um, dem data for the gradients on all the routes. Obviously, uh, Raynham. Right, we've got a nice long straight bit here now. They can cover more of the map. There's Fenchurch Street coming round Gas Factory Junction to Stratford, Temple Mills Yard, Ilford Depot. That's um, Forest Gate Junction, Woodgrange Park to Barking. Then you've got the South End Vic. Where we are now is at the Rain and Marshes. So, to the right here, this part now is the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. And then beyond is the Rain and Marsh RSPB land. Put it in running, maybe I won't make so much noise. a minute. This will be Perfleet coming up. An interesting bit of history we won't go into really. Um, and we are going to here, Tilbury Riverside. And on the next part we'll be starting at Shoebriness and going through to Fenchurch Street via Basildon. And that was my PC. Maybe I should put my brakes on, shouldn't I? Shouldn't be going any faster here, really. Doing the right modern speed for this part. And when they built the line, um, they had to cut through a large chalk bank. But there was already a chalk quarry at Purfleet. So they did this curvaceous detour so they could go through the ready cut quarry rather than cut their own. I don't care about speeding. As long as I don't derail, I've got derailments turned on as well. Oops. In Perfleet Station. Apart from custom buildings, very well done.
This is the uh, SO storage. That was the SO emergency crossing. see from all the sidings he's put in there's going to be lots of potential for freight work and these sidings are quite um, in depth as they are in real life various things I might run out of water yet no I'll be alright There's a QE2 bridge, look. Got about that. That's a Dovetail Games asset, I believe. Gotcha that time. Ha! Ah. So I don't like these Kuju signals at all. I'm sure he'll replace them. This is West Farrock Junction. That's the Ockenden branch. See, he started this route so long ago, I wouldn't be surprised if they're there because that's all he had access to when he started building it. This will be Gray's Station coming up. Nearly at the end of our run. What I might actually do is I might strip it of signals, um, my copy, and try and signal it using more modern signals, but I'm not very good at all that sort of stuff at all. Hello Skyfox. This is what was Tilbury Freightliner. Um, But it isn't now. Again, that's quite extensive. The freight line of sidings at Tilbury, the docks. got to go through now is Tilbury Town Station which is coming up and then take the curve into Tilbury Riverside which sadly no longer exists I should have put 
Oh, it's on, shouldn't I? Here you go. Bit late now. It's a standard class 4 tank. It's done by Digital Traction. It was for sale on Steam, but it's one of the, the uh, trains that they've stopped selling. But it's the type of class of locomotive that used to work this route up until it was electrified. Beautiful engine. I love these engines. Many years ago, someone did a, a rail tour up and tailed with these engines. There's videos of it on YouTube. It's called the Cockney Coaster, I believe, in the late 1990s. So it's Tilbury Riverside Junction coming up. is now a freight terminal. Could be. I don't suppose there's many of them running. Sure, there was two. They had two of them. They um, they didn't even top and tail it. They had uh, the second locomotive run light engine behind the train, and it did two trips on the line. And a few years later, they did it with a Black Five and a tank. Yeah. And this is pretty much how Tilbury Riverside always looked. No trains and weeds. This is now a freight terminal. Um, There we go, that's the first bit done. Took us 36 minutes, which is actually a little bit quicker than the real trains do it in. Real trains take 35 to get to Grays, but then they are stopping. So that is the end of the first part.